Hello everyone, welcome to Aptera Owners Club. Um, I wanted to do a video about the history of Aptera because there is um, a lot of confusion and innuendo about the, about the history of Aptera because Aptera is actually two separate companies. There was the company that was formed originally in 2006 and then that um, company basically went bankrupt and liquidated in 2011. And then Aptera did not really exist as a company until 2019, and then it reformed. And But many people think that it's been one company since 2006, and uh, that's not really the case. So the history of Aptera really is that um, Steve Fambro had an idea for a very fuel efficient aerodynamic car. And he started a company called Accelerated Composites. And um, it, it looked like this. And his original models of the Aptera, you know, the initial um, design looked like this weird thing here. And then eventually, you know, it morphed into this which was the uh, Type 1 and then later the Aptera 2E. This company collapsed in um, 2011. And there's uh, many lessons to be learned about it. And here's the kind of the chronology of it um, as uh, told by Wilbur and McCammon, who were the CEO and chief marketing officer at the time of its collapse. So in 2006, Steve Fambro and Chris Anthony start Aptera to build their ultra-efficient three-wheeled electric car. Um, and it was to be registered as a motorcycle. That's still true today. And then they skipped to 2008. So they basically, they, this chronology skips a bunch of stuff that happened between 2006 and 2008. So between 2006 and 2008, um, Steve Ambrose and Chris Anthony tried, tried to do the, um, the Progressive X Prize for a very efficient car. Their car didn't make it, it overheated. Uh, but they entered that car and it was doing well until it overheated. And they were doing a pretty good job of finding funding for it. Um, so here's where the major funder was a backer called Idea Lab, which was an incubator uh, based out of Pasadena. And then Google and a couple of other people, um, the NSA investments and some families invested into it. By far the biggest investor was um, Idea Lab, who invested over 20, probably about $25 million into it. And then Google and a couple other people had uh, funded it. And so they were getting funding up until July of 2008. And then what happened at that time is they got a new board um, as more, more investors piled in here. Um, they wanted a board and the board basically decided that what they needed to do was they needed to hire um, people that had built cars before. So the new board of directors, according to um, Anthony, spent a ridiculous amount of money recruiting a new executive team. And they hired um, a CEO from Detroit uh, named Paul Wilbur. Paul Wilbur had um, run a couple of um, tier one suppliers to automotive industries and also was involved with saline engineering. Um, so at that time, he took over Aptera at, in 2008. And then what happened was um, there was evidently at least innuendo of a lot of friction between the two. And um, this is, this is a, a article from um, Wired.com that was talking about it. And basically, Steve Fambro and Chris Anthony were basically pushed out of the company. You know, they, they said they left of their own accord. We don't, we won't really know the whole story. Um, but they left the company in 2008 as, well, I think about 2009 or 2010, actually, soon after um, Paul Wilbur came on. And what happened was it became pretty clear that what they started doing as soon as he came on, they decided to delay production of the three-wheeler. So, you know, this was the three-wheeler that they had um, made. This is the three-wheeler that they were uh, making. And one of the problems that they thought was 
these windows did not roll down. See, they were too curved and too smooth, and they don't run down. They don't. Um, they don't roll down. And one of the problems was is that when people tried to do drive through, you couldn't you couldn't do a drive through in this vehicle because the windows didn't roll down, and they thought that was a big problem. Um, and so they changed the design to look like this. And so look at the, the difference between this design and this design. This is frankly much uglier and it's boxier, but this the doors are more vertical so that these windows can roll down. And so when um, Paul Wilbur came on, they changed the car. They spent, instead of delivering this car, they decided to redesign the car to this car, and that um, took some time. And then the other thing they decided, and this was probably one of their biggest mistakes, was at that time there was a um, Department of Energy Advanced Technology Vehicle Manufacturing loan. And at, and at that time, all the big car comp EV car companies, Tesla, Fisker, Coda Automotive, they were all pursuing these loans. And Tesla um, and Fisker were awarded between the two of them like a billion dollars in loans. Without this injection of money, Tesla would have gone bankrupt as well. And maybe I'll do a video on Tesla's history. Um, then what happened was is that three-wheeled vehicles did not qualify for these loans. So Aptera spent a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of resources lobbying Congress and the Department of Energy to allow three-wheeled vehicles. And then in 2009, so a year later, they got approval um, to do it. Then they resubmitted. At this time, what happened was um, the whole Solyndra fiasco went down. So um, the government funded a solar manufacturer called Solyndra. They went defunct. Um, and there were a lot of problems with that company. And it just looked bad. And so the Department of Energy then really clamped down on how they were going to give out loans. So they made it very difficult. And then they said um, that they weren't going to fund it. And then Aptera decided that they were going to try to develop a four-wheeled, four-door, four-seater electric sedan, which they thought had a better... So they kind of gave up on making the original Aptera, this car. They decided they were going to make a new car that looks sort of like this. And they spent a lot of time trying to um, manufacture this car. They were burning money this whole time. So all the money they had raised from Idea Lab and Google and stuff, you know, they were burning through that. And um, they were trying to count on getting this money from the Department of Energy through this um, ATVM loan to get funding. But then the DOE said, we'll give you $150 million if you can raise $80 million privately. But then um, DOE turned down some loans and then private investors got spooked and said, you know, uh, we don't think it's worth it. They could not find the $80 million privately. So then they didn't raise money and they basically, they just ran out of cash and um, they died. And in retrospect, you know, Paul Wilbur said that, you know, he spent three of his three and a half years pursuing Department of Energy loan funding um, rather than uh, building cars. Um, so that's what they were talking about is in here that um, if they would have started building cars, if they would have just started building this car and selling it, they could have generated some revenue. Um, that's what they talk about here. Yeah, so al although Aptera managed to raise $24 million just before capital markets exploded last year, the decision to delay production it created a much larger capital requirement because it delayed the revenues they could have received shipping cars to more than 3,000 customers. So they had about three to 4,000 customers that had put down reservations and were ready to buy this car. Um, instead, they decided to restructure to this car and then delayed that again to try to build this car so they could pursue a bigger loan. Um, and then eventually they just ran out of money. They liquidated and then a, um, a Chinese car company basically bought the intellectual property. And this was seen in China. So this is the 
the ugly version with the more upright doors seen in China. And it was um, bought by this company called Xingzheng Zhanwei. And um, they had plans to uh, manufacture this car and this vehicle rather and deliver it. But that never happened. Um, that company imploded too. And then somehow in 2019, um, Chris Anthony and Steve Fambro were able to re, um, reacquire the intellectual property and the rights to the design and the uh, technology, the composite technology for the car, and they restarted. So the Aptera company that exists now is not the same company that existed back then. That company went bankrupt and was liquidated, and all the intellectual property was bought by this company in China called Zheng Zhejianwei. And then they went bankrupt, and um, the current company restarted in 2019. So this company is two years old. But they are the same people. So Steve Ambro and Chris Anthony are the same people, but they were the ones that were pushed out of the company as the company basically um, redesigned the original car, this car, to be more like this car, and then pers pursued production of this car in the hopes of getting a large Department of Energy ATVM loan, because that was the path that Tesla and the other um, startup electric vehicle companies were pursuing. So they thought that was the best way to go because they would get a huge infusion of money and then they could go into mass production. I think the plan now more is to work with less capital and have a smaller factory and build kind of grow more organically rather than pers um, pursuing a large loan. So anyways, I hope that's a little bit clear um, when people say, oh, you know, Aptera hasn't delivered a car in six years or 16 years. Uh, that's not completely accurate because this company uh, shut down in 2011 and because they just got the same name again and it's the same um, shape of the car but it's it's different people running it because the people that ran it from 2008 until its collapse was not chris anthony and steve fambro they were running it just until 2008 so they ran it for two years and they stepped back when the board replaced them with paul wilbur and then that's when um, a lot of decisions were made that probably in retrospect were not good decisions. Um, they probably should have just delivered this car and grown organically rather than trying to redesign the car to be this thing and then uh, this thing and pursue a $150 million loan from the Department of Energy. All right. Well, thanks for watching. And if you guys have any comments, please comment below. Thanks for watching.